Hi, window watchers. Just pinning up this picture on the bulletin board of the moth on a spreading board or a pinning board. And the reason that's up there today is because, well, remember when we talked about pinning boards and spreading boards before for our insects when we, when we caught them in our, in our insect net, our butterfly net? And this is what happens to them then after we catch them. We want to put them on this board and spread them out like this and pin their wings down so that they'll dry and then we can mount them and they'll be very pretty with their wings all spread out like this. And let's just look at this one here that's already made, first of all. See this slit in the center here? It's very, a very narrow slit down here at the bottom, isn't it? And then it gets wider and wider and wider. And it gets a little wider toward the top so that if we catch a bigger butterfly or a bigger moth than this one here, if it's bigger, it'll fit in up here, won't it? And if it's smaller, it'll fit in way down here at the bottom. And I have some pieces of cardboard ready here, this corrugated cardboard with the little things. That it's the thick kind of cardboard. And that's just what this spreading board is made out of here, just pieces of cardboard glued together. And I'll show you what I mean. Here's a larger piece, and I think I'll use it for the bottom. And then I have another size that will fit right on top of here, a little bit smaller. And I really didn't pay too much attention on whether or not I was cutting them out the same size, because that really doesn't make any difference. The difference comes in putting on the top layers that form the narrow channel that fits down. So I'll just put some paste along here on this cardboard and paste down the first piece. Now you can use, find this cardboard anywhere, old boxes, and just cut them up in pieces with scissors. It's not very hard to cut through. And then I'm going to stick this other one right on top there. And it'll dry, and it's not, as you can see, even. It's not the same size, but it doesn't really make that much difference. And then I have two pieces here. I'm going to put those on. But these pieces here are the ones that's going to start making the slit. It's going to be narrow. You can almost put them right together down at the bottom if you'd like, so that this little slit gets wider and wider and wider so that you can move your different size insects up or down. So I'm going to put some paste on the back side of this one here. Get it all over like that. You probably want to get the paste in all the corners so that it will stick down nice and tight for you. And the reason you use so many pieces, you can put more than that on if you want to, to build it up a little more, like the one that we looked at before. And then I'm going to set that up, this one on at a slight angle so that it's slanted just a little bit instead of running straight up and down the middle. And then this second one, I'm going to put some paste or some glue on this one too. Making sure that it gets all over the back as much as I can get on it. You could even dump some, some of the paste out on the cardboard and spread it around, I suppose. And then now, this is the one that makes the groove. So we want to put it right together at the bottom and leave it open a little farther. About half a finger's width here at the top, see? Some of these insects are rather fat, so instead of leaving it just like that, I'm going to put two more pieces on top of it. Right along, following the same lines, like that, see? So with my glue, turn this over here and I'll put some, some of the paste. I think I'll just pour a little glob of it out here this time and see how the spreading of it around works. I don't think it's going to pour out very well, but I'll push a little out on there. There's a pretty big glob. And we'll spread it around. And this should be the top, very top layer of the cardboard. It should be pasted down pretty well, I think. So there we are, and I even had some left. So I'll just save it on my brush, and I'll turn this one over here, put it right along the same edge as the one that's underneath it, right there. And then we'll do the same thing to this one. See if I can get some more paste out of this jar here. Get it out on the cardboard. Spread it around a little bit. There we are. Turn it over and make sure that it runs right along that same angle of the 
other cardboard that's underneath it. And there we are, and that finishes it. Now, that wasn't very hard, was it? And it's something like this is very handy to have around, especially when we go out and start catching our butterflies and moths, and then we can mount them so that it will look just like this one, spreading the wings apart and pinning them down. But we'll probably be talking some more about that a little later. But right now, I do want to mention what we talked about before. This little booklet, it's called the 4-H Club Insect Manual. And in this booklet, it tells all the different kinds of insects, all the different kinds that you might find in your butterfly net when you go out and start hunting them. And of course, you probably won't know one insect from another. So then all you have to do is look it up. There are pictures in here and descriptions of all different kinds of insects, and it will help you decide what kind of an insect you've caught this time. And it's a very handy little thing, and a lot of you have written in and asked for it. So if you would like one of these little booklets that will tell how to tell your insects apart, you just write to Sunny, care of the window watchers, and we'll be glad to send you one, free of charge, of course. And it's called the 4-H Club Insect Manual. And you can ask for that or ask for a, book, a bug book. And we'll be glad to send it to you. And be sure you include your name and address and your age. Can you remember that now? Okay. I think I'll lay this aside here. And I have some things on various shelves of the bookcase here that I think you might be interested in. You know, have you ever had somebody say, show you something and say, well now, can you do this without doing something else? Pulling a trick on you, more or less? Well, I'd like to show you several tricks today that you might pull on someone else. And this is the first one regular bottle, just any kind of a bottle, that a penny will slip into. If you drop this through the, to the top of the hole of the bottle right here, it would drop right into the bottom. And then, using this penny, see, it fits right through there. Did you hear it drop? Well, then you need a little piece of cardboard. Not heavy cardboard cut off of a, any kind of a box. And long enough so that when you bend it in half like this, and set it up here on top of the bottle. And I have to do a little pinching around here on the sides, on this corner where it's bent. If you put a, lay a penny across it like that, it will hold it up there. Now, the question that you ask the person that you're playing the trick on this time is, can, oh, it popped open. Well, we'll just have to pinch it together a little bit tighter right here because you have to have this cardboard pinched enough so that it'll, it'll sit on there with the penny on top of it so that it won't let the penny fall through the hole in the bottle. We'll try another one here. There, now I hope that stays. Now then, the question is, can you make the penny drop into the bottle without touching the bottle or the paper or the penny? You think you could do it? Well, I'll show you how. I have a glass here that's full of water. And I'll just dip my finger in, and then I'm going to let a drop drop right down there. Oh, I missed it that time. Right where the car piece of cardboard is folded. And watch what happens. Stop touching it now. Did you see it move a little bit that time? There it went. See, dropping the water on this corner right here forces the cardboard open. It puts some water right here in this little groove, and it makes it open up, and the penny drops through. So you might try that on your friends sometime and see whether or not they can do that. And then here's another one. You can do this trick with um, toothpicks. I'm going to use clothespins just because I have so many of them. Here they are. You're going to use, this trick takes 15 of them, and you can count them while I put them out there just to see that there are 15. You want to make three squares, first of all. You want to count the clothespins while I'm putting them down. There's three, there's four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12. Now then, in the first one, clothespin or whatever you're using, sticks even work, goes up and down like that. The next one goes across. 
And the next one goes sideways. There. Now, this is the question. There are 15 clothespins there. Can you take away six of them and have 10 left? Now think about it. There are 15, so you have 15 clothespins minus six, and can you get it to come out 10? You know, six from 15 is usually nine, isn't it? Well, look at this a minute. Can you figure out how to take away six of them and have 10 left? Well, here, I'll show you. One, two, three, four, five, and six. You took six away and we have 10 left, haven't we? That's kind of fun. You want to try that on your friends sometime. I bet they won't be able to get it. And then here's something else that you might try. This is more boxes. This takes 12 uh, clothespins or toothpicks or whatever you're using. And this time, we're going to make squares. Three <coughs> on the top, like this. Using clothespins, you see this clothespin acts as a side for this square and this one. So we use three on the top row two down here on the bottom so that when we get all through how many squares we're going to have got them there's five there isn't there now then this question is can you take three of these clothespins away and have three squares left now the squares have to be just exactly the same size as they are right here you look at it. I'll give you a minute and see whether or not you can just imagine taking three of them away and still having three squares left. Think you know what it is? Think you take these three here? Well, you're wrong, because then there's four squares left. Or do you think you could take these three out here? Well, that's not right either, because these two pins are still there, aren't they? Well, this is how it is done. Here's one, here's two, here's three. I've taken three away, and I still have three squares of the same size that we started with left. That's kind of fun trying to pull tricks on your friends, isn't it? Sometime we'll have to talk about doing some other kinds of tricks. Oh, there's a lot of things like this that you can do. There's also a game that you can play that takes quite a bit of talent of just laying out so many clothespins, perhaps 12 or 15 each time, and then you take one and your friend takes one. And the object is to see who takes the last one. The person that has to take the last stick or clothespin or whatever you are using loses the game. You try that sometime. It's hard not to take that last stick or clothespin. But this has been kind of fun, and we're going to have to talk about doing some tricks later on again. So. Till now, goodbye.